Life Audio. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations. We want families to come here and gain insightful strategies that empower them to successfully teach diverse learners at home. Hosted by founder and CEO of Sped Homeschool, Peggy Ployer. Our goal is that these powerful weekly conversations will boost your confidence to cultivate the best at-home learning environment for your student. For more homeschool resources, go to spedhomeschool.com. You're listening to Empowering Homeschool Conversations with Peggy Ployer. We'll start the conversation with Peggy and her guests next. A powerful prayer life does not require hiking a mountain to be able to hear from God. God can meet us right in the middle of our busy lives to help, guide, and speak to us through prayer. I'm Christina Patterson, host of the Teach Us to Pray podcast, providing practical teaching and encouragement on how you can make prayer a natural and consistent part of your everyday life. I promise it won't require hiking a mountain, but you just might develop the faith to move one. Listen and subscribe at lifeaudio.com. The Historical Jesus Podcast is the sweeping saga of the life and times of Galilean Jesus of Nazareth, as well as the faith, religion, and church founded to honor and disseminate his acts and teachings. Join me, Mark Vinette, on this fascinating journey through time, exploring the many great works of Christian theology, literature, architecture, music, and art inspired by the words and deeds of Jesus Christ. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool, a nonprofit that empowers families to home educate diverse learners. To learn more, visit spedhomeschool.com. Here's Peggy Ployer. Today, we are going to talk about practical advice for homeschooling parents of special needs children. And my special guest today is Terry McKee. She's an author, speaker, podcaster, and blogger who also homeschools her youngest daughter. She's married to Greg, who is paralyzed, and together they have four children who all have varying special needs. She's a follower of Jesus Christ. She teaches adult Sunday school and writes books to encourage Christians in their faith journey. She encourages people in the Christian faith on her blog and podcast, nearyouraltar.com, and in homeschooling through homeschooling one child, that's the number one, dot com. And she's the president and founder of IAJ Ministries, LLC, a Christian conference, retreat, and event planning organization that she's going to tell you a little bit more about today because she's got something big coming up. And I'm excited to have you on on the show again, Terry, to um, talk about some practical stuff. What I love that. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Well, and good. yeah, yeah. This I is didn't a realize my bio sounded like such a mouthful. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that was the first time I read through it. I know you just sent it to me, and I was like, oh, this is impressive. <laughs> it's okay. God gives us a lot of varying experiences, and when we try to put them all together, it doesn't seem to always make sense. But like Terry and I were talking ahead of the show about is he brings it all together eventually. And um, maybe you as a parent are going, I don't know why I've been called to homeschool. I don't know what I'm doing in this. Is God even at work in this? Yes, he is. Um, you may not see the fruit of that for a long time. <laughs> right. But mm-hmm. um, but yes, mm-hmm. he is at work in it. Can you share a little bit about your homeschooling background, just how that came about, and um, just how God has worked that out sure. in and through your life? Well, I was a homeschool child, um, homeschool teenager for one year um, uh, back in the 80s when there were no co-ops and it was slightly right. really illegal. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was, uh, did not have the best experience mm. at it because there were, there were no one there were no one around. Um, there were no communities around right. to bounce ideas off of. And but I learned um, that year I was learning about the inner workings of s- the space shuttle. Oh. And my mom said, um, hey, the space shuttle is about to launch. Why don't mm-hmm. you, as part of homeschool, come watch it on the television? And I was like, cool. And um, then the Challenger blew up right oh, there. Wow. And I was like, oh, 
my gosh, this is not how this is supposed to end. Mm. That was my first um, taste of homeschooling. Wow. was in the 80s. And then my oldest son, I have four children, as you Mm -hmm. were saying, the bio and all that. Um, Sam is now 29 and has autism, Mm -hmm. bipolar disorder, a bunch of other things. And then Jacob is married and has... um, He's 26, I think. They're <laughs> it's hard to keep track of after a while. <laughs> and, um, But he has severe ADHD. He's like a little rabbit on, you know, crack or something. I don't know. But, um, and then uh, Ellie is my uh, stepdaughter, but I don't claim the step thing. But she uh-huh. has one diabetes and ADHD. Mm. And then Laura, the one I actually homeschool mm. now, um, she has chronic migraines and dyslexia and ADHD, um, all the things and yeah. anxiety. So, but I first, um, Sam, when he was in public school and he mm-hmm. went through public school his whole life, except at the last semester of his senior year. And he was getting so badly bullied, Peggy. Oh, that yeah. Um, I was just like, you know, forget this. Hmm. I'm, I'm pulling you out and we, I worked with his teachers to do, um, I think they called it a medical school at home. Right. Situation. Yes. That is an option. Mm-hmm. Yes. But I, um, I homeschooled him basically at mm-hmm. home yeah. and, um, they were doing menu math where you have like all this stuff, like at a restaurant, it looks like a menu and then you have to add up the stuff. And then, you know, if you give a 20, how much is your change uh, situation? Okay. And he hated it. Hmm. He had been doing menu math for years and years and years. Oh, wow. And um, he was having behavior issues in class because of this. And I just asked, you know, I said, I asked the school, can I have a pre-algebra book? Hmm. Back then, they actually had textbooks, you know? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> and they they fought me on it. They said, no, he needs to do this menu math. And I said, he is bored. That's mm. why the behaviors are coming out like this. He's right. bored. And so I finally got a um, pre-algebra book. And... I introduced it to him and he thought it was like a code. He thought he had been giving uh-huh. you know, um, something to decipher. Mm-hmm. And he was so intrigued by it. And his wow. mind, he has such an engineer's mind hmm. that it wasn't being um, really, he wasn't being, being challenged. Taught yes. or challenged. Uh-huh. Right. So he thrived with that and they were, uh-huh. they were shocked. Hmm. And so when, my our daughter Laura, the the youngest, when she was about to start kindergarten, it was right after Sam finished high school. Oh, and I said okay. my husband and I was talking and said, why don't we just homeschool her? Right. We could just we can do so much. We can hmm. be interest led and and we can teach her what we want to teach her. Right. We disciple as we are called to disciple Mm. our children. And um, so we did that all of, you know, one semester of her kindergarten year. And then my husband was shot and paralyzed in a Mm. attempted armed robbery. And we took some really bad advice from some well-meaning friends Mm. who said, you know, you can't possibly homeschool her now because you have so much on your plate. Oh. And so we said, you know, you might be right. And mm-hmm. so I hate to say it, but we pulled her out and of homeschool and we enrolled her at the local public school. And we knew she has had trouble with um, you know, reading. Mm-hmm. And then she had a diagnosis, a formal diagnosis of dyslexia. And so she, by the time second grade at the end of second grade rolled around, she was still in public school. And um, we had decided because we got, we, I'm going all over the place, like one of those rabbit squirrels. 
Well, that's okay. So, I mean, that's kind of how our life works, yeah, though. Yes. It, it, it doesn't have this yeah perfect little step-by-step exactly. step plan. And I think that's a good thing to, to point out, too, because yes. I think as we're, we're moving forward in this conversation, we want a step-by-step -step plan on how to make it work. Yes. But that's not how it but works. We can't. No, yeah, no, it's a lot of give and take and trying yeah. something and see if it works. And if it doesn't fall back, pull right. something else out. Mm -hmm. And, but with, um, with Laura, we just decided that, um, when we got the, her reading testing done at the end of second grade and it showed that she was reading on a kindergarten level. Wow. And, but we learned that the teacher, her second grade teacher was bullying her oh, about wow. reading. Mm -hmm. And I remember being at the last IEP meeting and um, we had already made the decision. We're pulling her out at the end of second grade. We're going to homeschool her third grade on. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember being at the IEP meeting and they said, well, we need an IEP for next year. And I said, you know, you're right. But I'm going to have the ultimate IEP. And they're like, <laughs> that sounds great. What, you know, what are yeah, right. I said, I'm homeschooling her. Right. <laughs> and, um, they're like, oh, no, you can't. You're not qualified. And I said, I, mm. I'm her mother. Right. I am very qualified. And. Um, Amen. Yes. So I just, we pulled her out at the end of the school year. You know, we let her finish second grade. I mean, we weren't going to pull her out with a week to go. Yeah. And, and then we started um, August 1st of, um, we gave her a little summer break. And mm -hmm. we started August 1st and with like intensive reading. And I mm -hmm. would read to her and show and, you know, trace the words with my finger as I read to her. And by the, by December, Peggy, by Christmas, mm. she was reading on grade level. Wow. And, but it took intensive reading and there wasn't a real curric curriculum I followed, you know, people, mm -hmm. people want this magic curriculum box, right? right. Yes. My kid is this, or my kid has this, what's the curriculum that will fix it? And yes. I'm yes. here to say there are no curriculums out there that are magic that mm -hmm. will fix the dyslexia in your child right. or that will fix the autism. Mm -hmm. It's just not, they don't exist. Right. But um, with Laura, it just took intensive one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. um, reading to her and getting her to read back to us and, mm -hmm. you know, introducing, um, sight words and yes. just really working with her. I did mm -hmm. not just put her in front of a book and say, there you go. Do right. that. You know, yeah. and it's very labor intensive. It is. Mm -hmm. And, but we, I used every trick of the trade. Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I put, I put, um, grits. I'm from the South. We eat grits. Okay. okay. <laughs> So I poured grits into a cookie baking sheet, okay, mm -hmm. with um, mm -hmm. like a little lid, lip on the edge so that yeah. all the grits wouldn't fall off onto the floor. Right. And I would get her to, you know, write out her spelling words with her finger mm -hmm. in the grits okay, so yeah. she could see, you know, like cat. Yeah. And then she would wiggle the tray and erase it. Uh -huh. And then write another word. And it was um, kinesthetic learning. Yes. And it was just really intensive, but it was fun for her. You know, mm -hmm. she thought it was a blast shaking it, you know. Um, oh, absolutely. And getting it to go away and then rewriting it. Mm -hmm. And we had a chalkboard um, in the dining room wall. Our dining room was the homeschool room, you know. Uh -huh. And. It, we did not have, we live in a tiny little house. And so at the time, the dining room functioned as both the dining room and the homeschool room and the catch-all room and everything else. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know, and, but we made it work. And mm -hmm. we used um, the game Scrabble with the tiles. We just used the tiles. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. 
yep. and she could write, you know, spell out words mm-hmm. with Scrabble tiles. Right. And then ev- eventually we moved to pencil and paper. Mm. And that's a really good write point. Words three yep. times each, but it took, it was um, just really working with her and playing mm-hmm. games with her. Um, there are lots of great games out there that reinforce reading and you don't necessarily have to use them like the board game suggests, you know? Oh yeah, exactly. Like Rebel tiles. But as far as like curriculum, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm ashamed to say this cause I'm a homeschool blogger, you know, and I have all <laughs> these people sponsoring my events and all this stuff and I love them dearly. Mm-hmm. But um, when you don't have a whole lot of money to spend on curriculum, Go to eBay. Oh, that's, that's what yeah. I do a lot of times when I don't have the money for curriculum. I go in there and I search for like, for example, fifth grade math book. Hmm. And I have bought her math books and science books off of eBay for like $5 a book. And it's an actual textbook. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there are many things you can do without spending three and $400 on a box curriculum. Right. Um, well, and on top of that, I mean, I, and we had a viewer ahead of time submit a question about recommended homeschool curriculum. And so, um, so this yes. is, you know, one of those topics that um, we definitely um, know that our viewers want us to, to talk about today. Um, but you're going to supplement anyways, you know, absolutely. And, and a lot of even those more pricey curriculums don't have all the supplements you need. After a word from our sponsor, we'll dive back into this conversation. Hello, I'm Carol McCracken, and I'd like to invite you to join me and our team on the Your Daily Bible Verse podcast. This podcast examines one verse each day to learn more about God and His will for us. I'm excited to tell you about the new series the host team will share with you during this season of Lent. Each episode will be a journey to the cross. We will follow Jesus through some of his most significant steps in the Gospels, focusing on a particular verse as we always do. It'll be a progressive series. Join us daily as we follow Jesus doing what he was born to do to save us all. You can find us on Life Audio or whatever you listen to podcast content on. This is Empowering Homeschool Conversations, provided by Sped Homeschool. Go to spedhomeschool.com to get resources and support for teaching your unique learner at home. So where did you go to find additional things to do to reinforce what those books that you found were um, and your student were learning? I think that is probably the bigger thing that parents need to know practically. Um, I made Laura a, um, we, when she was learning about fractions, mm-hmm. okay. I, um, we had pizza one night for dinner, you know, your Friday night pizza dinner. Yeah. And it, um, it came from like, you know, Papa John's or wherever they're not sponsoring mm-hmm. this thing, but whatever. Yeah. And <laughs> it came, but they, they made a mistake in the making of that pizza, that was revolutionary for our homeschool and that um, I had ordered the pizza to be full. They didn't actually make a mistake, but I forgot that I had ordered it like this, Uh that um, I had ordered the pizza to be covered in pepperoni, but Mm -hmm. only have half with mushrooms and green peppers. Cause I like that. I like the mushrooms and green peppers. No one else in my family does. Okay. (laughs) Um, and when I opened up the box and I saw that half of the pizza was pepperoni and or green pepper and mushroom, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, my gosh, pizza fractions. Uh, so yes. The next day I am um, or the next Monday, I had Laura draw a giant circle on a giant piece of paper mm-hmm. and I gave her um, a a little drawing of a pepperoni and a drawing of a mushroom and a drawing Mm. of, you know, green pepper or whatever, whatever, you know, toppings she wanted on her pizza. Mm -hmm. And I I said, um, we're going to divide the pizza into eights. Okay. So let's put 
you know, half pepperoni on half the pizza and mm-hmm. then two eighths or one quarter of the pizza, it's green pepper mm-hmm. and et cetera, et cetera. Right. And she learned fractions by doing that, yeah. by making it, it was fun. It was visual. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she understands, even today, she understands fractions because of the pizza fraction game. And yes. it was a and it what it, it took you one day. <laughs> it, took one, it took one day to figure out all the missing all the moving parts of it. Right. But it, it was inspired by ordering pizza. Mm-hmm. So that's and, interesting because I think we forget that every day around us are the greatest teaching opportunities. And we look past them looking for this magic bullet, like you said, curriculum. We think it's going to solve everything. And yet what's around us, like your grits in the tray and and other things, are just accessible and near us and they aren't going to cost us anything. You know, you're measuring cups in your mm. cabinet. You yeah. know, it has one cup, half cup, quarter cup, third cup. That teaches fractions right there. Right. And so, you know, it's great to have curriculum. Okay. We, you know, we need curriculum to a certain degree, but to mm-hmm. supplement, you know, kids want it fun. That's how they learn. Right. Fun, hands on. And, but, but yeah, I just want to reiterate that there's no magic curriculum out there mm-hmm. to, to be the end all be all. You know, I I read it all the time. What's the best curriculum for a kid who's autistic? Yeah. Or what's the best curriculum for X, Y, Z? And, you know, it depends so much on your end, on the individual child. It does. Yes. You know, if, um, if a child learns best on a screen, you know, we're on a screen right now, Mm -hmm. um, then the best curriculum for that particular child would be, you know, online or Mm -hmm. not so much online, but like computer-based. Right. Yeah. Um, If a child is, um, if a child is, can't deal with the temptation of being online, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Uh huh. Then maybe being online is not a good yeah. thing to be on. Right. You know? mm-hmm. um, if a child learns best by spiral bound curriculum, you know, there's a slew of things out there for that particular child. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Laura um, is now in the eighth grade. Hmm. God help me. And. Um, <laughs> But she um she just kind of protested the algebra one book. Hmm. Just it, it it was just so um dull yeah. and it was so many problems that she just could not with her little ADHD mind, she just could not focus. Right. So she took it upon herself to find an app on her phone for algebra one. Oh wow. And She, um, it's kind of like a game and Mm -hmm. she has to do so many problems to get to the next level. Right. And if she gets one wrong, she does not advance to the next level. So that's how she does math is Mm. on her phone and she is learning. So as far as curriculum, there are so many different options and there are. You know, and I would suggest um, if someone can afford it and if it's if one is nearby you, near you, to go to um, a homeschool convention um, Mm -hmm. because you can actually touch the curriculum and look at it and flip through it and think this curriculum would work for my kid. Right. This curriculum would not. Or, Or you even as a parent teaching it, I found myself going there's no way I'm going to use this. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. yes. And, you know, if it's, if it is hard and does not inspire the parent to teach mm. it. Right. Then it's not going to help or inspire the child to learn it. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so very but, true. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, those, those hands-on experiences are good. Or just, you know, somebody that, you know, um, showing you their curriculum. Um, but, Absolutely. but a lot of times too, somebody has a great experience with it and it's just, it's not for you. Um, right. so I think we go off a lot of things, especially in our day and age. It seems like when lots of people recommend it, you know, it gets lots of stars and reviews. Then we're like, that must be the best product. Not always. <laughs> no. it, it totally um, is yeah. child dependent and your child might love it or your mm-hmm. child might, might hate it. Right. You know, um, one of Laura's friends right now is doing a curriculum that she did last year and Laura hated it. And mm. Rebecca loves it. Wow. So, and is doing well at it. And I'm like, mm, we're, we're not going to do that for algebra and we can stick with the app because that's working. You right. know, if a curriculum is working, don't rock the boat. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> if, on the other side, if the curriculum is not working, no matter how much you spent on it, right, it's not working. Jump ship and mm-hmm. figure something else out. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I love that you got buy-in too from your daughter, especially as our kids get older. Um, that is so important because they, they, you have this like struggle of wills when your kids get older yes. and yes. Yeah, they want to be an adult and you, we want to start giving them that ability to make more decisions. And so why yes. not in this arena too teach them how they learn and how to yes. continue learning. Um, Cause they'll, I mean, she'll continue to probably find apps for other things as she gets older because that Absolutely. seems to be a driver for her. Yeah. Yes. And every year I ask her, you know, what would you like to study next mm-hmm. year? Right. for history and science. Those are the two big ones. And when she was little, admittedly, she was like, dinosaurs! Yes. Dinosaurs. <laughs> and so we studied a whole year of dinosaurs. Hmm. And I learned so much yeah. more than I ever <laughs> thought I'd know about dinosaurs. But um, but this um, this year, it's been a struggle. She you know, she said American history. And so, but Uh it's been a struggle admittedly. And so she was like, Mm. you know, can I just learn about pirates right now? I'm really into a pirate phase. Can I learn about pirates? And Mm. so we went to the library and she checked out some books on pirates and she's reading that. And, um, you know, it's very much interest based. Because yeah. if a child is interested, they will learn about it. They will. Yes. You, you create yeah. more like mental energy to yes. focus. And um, I know we've had many shows about that. And that's really important because if you're bored, I mean, yeah, it's it's just not going to go anywhere. So, yeah. Yes. Great advice. So other than curriculum, what are some other practical things that you have to share? Um, let's let's just move on to the next next thing that you want to talk about um, sure. that probably weighing heavy on a lot of, you know, parents' hearts as they either consider homeschooling mm-hmm. or they're in the thick of it. Well, especially with special needs kids, um, mm-hmm. one thing that really weighs on parents' minds is transitioning to the yes. next phase of life. Especially yeah. if you're, you know, like junior, senior year and you're thinking, oh, my goodness, what are we going to do when Tommy graduates high school or right. whatever? Mm-hmm. Um, and we had a question from one of our viewers, actually. Cynthia um, Am had yes. said, how can we help students on the spectrum to get past their fears of leaving the nest or start considering secondary transition choices? So, yes, absolutely. That's right. a big one. Well. As a parent of a child who I I went through that with him, Mm -hmm. um, I have tons of advice on this. (laughs) So before the child, like a month before the child turns 18, Mm -hmm. it is very, very important that you follow your state laws. Because I know this goes out to everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, Find out what your state laws are, maybe a few months before the 18th birthday. And find out what you need to get legal guardianship of your child if you feel like your child just cannot make those financial medical decisions on his or her own self. Right. Um, 
And some you have children, to do that before 18, right? Before 18. Yes. And mm -hmm. like you go on, it has to be like we, when Sam was about to turn 18, I gathered up all the paperwork like a month before. I gathered mm -hmm. up evaluations, IEP, um, IEP stuff, um, like school evaluations, et cetera. Right. I gathered yeah. So one of the things my my parents did too. I've, I have mm -hmm. 10 adopted siblings and they've have mm -hmm. guardianship for quite a few of them is they were told like long ago, way before the processes started for those that had more abilities. I mean, I had yes. some siblings that were wheelchair bound, pretty evident these, right. but then um, they said they were told by social workers, document everything, even though it's totally That's ridiculous, crazy. document it because it shows their inability to make good decisions. Um, right. And, and that is helpful in the long run. You hate documenting stuff like that, yes. but for that type of transition and to get that um, type of custody, you, you need that um, evidence there. Right. And if a child has like um, a cognitive delay where, like for autism, you know, there are multiple mm -hmm. different levels on the spectrum right. mm -hmm. and because that's why it's called a spectrum. Yeah. But for your more severe cases where there's cognitive delay to the point that the child has a problem with making medical and financial decisions. Right. Then you're going to want to be the legal guardian. Mm -hmm. And this does a couple of things. This protects the child from harm, yes. um, financial and medical harm, and gives you access to that child's records, both mm -hmm. financial and medical, et cetera. Um, otherwise, you can't even go and see the doctor or make an appointment on that child's behalf. Yes. Yeah. Um, you just, you can't. Um you can't make financial choices for that child because mm -hmm. legally that child's an adult at 18. Yeah. So you want to go in like on the 18th birthday, actually file for guardianship. Mm. But again, that depends on the state. Yes. Part of that process that was really hurtful to me personally as the mom was that we had to have Sam declared incompetent. Hmm. And while that stung greatly, like, you know, we've spent 18 years trying to help this child be competent. Right. And now we're going to declare him incompetent. But hmm. this is one of those times a label is hurtfully necessary hmm. in order to have a common good. Yeah. So it, don't let it hurt too much, you know, mm -hmm. because it court with the courts, you have to do that. Yes. Um, yep. We, um, we kept that word on the down low with our son who would ask, yeah. you know, what's in, what does incompetent mean? Mm. And I was like, um, well, okay. <laughs> um, it means that, I'm going to have to help you make certain decisions on your own or with you. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that you're not smart. It just means for the court, um, you need more help to make certain decisions. Right. That's what it means. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. But then after that, when you have that legal guardianship, you can, and when the child turns 18, you can file for um, things like SSI. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, and it really depends on the state. I mean, yeah. And with um, Medicaid and all this, when you get SSI in a lot of states, you automatically get Medicaid. Mm -hmm. um, and that is good for, you know, that's your insurance. That's the insurance for the child. Right. It has, mm -hmm. doesn't really have a bearing on income at that point after 18, because right. then the child's an adult. They they're have no adult. income yes. and mm -hmm. they're getting Medicaid because of the disability that they have. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as transitioning, you know, you have some decisions to make whether or mm -hmm. not the child is going to live with you at home. Right. 
um, or get an apartment or housing elsewhere Mm -hmm. or a group home. That's another option or supported living. Yeah. And it depends on one, the child's needs and what you want to do as a parent Mm -hmm. um, and what the availability of those options in your state and in your Mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And when Sam, I can't remember how old he was because I'm getting old myself and things like that. (laughs) But in in 2015, um, it was not working having Sam live with us Mm. for many different reasons. Um, And he wanted to have his own place and whatnot. And um, we decided to go the group home route. And we put him, we found a group home that had an opening, which should have been our first clue. Mm -hmm. And um, it, he was there for exactly one year. Hmm. Um, It, for us and him, it was not a good fit. Hmm. That particular group home. Now I'm, I'm not saying that all group homes are bad. Right. There are some that are wonderful. And if there's a need there and your child is thriving. Right. By all means, that is a possibility. Mm -hmm. But there, what I'm saying is there are many different possibilities. Yeah. And you have to find the one that fits him. Now, in 2000, in the height of the pandemic, of all things, you know, we decided he was still living with us after the group home incident. And he wanted his own place. Hmm. Focus on his own place. Right. And. So we found this um, apartment complex that caters to the elderly and disabled. Oh. And um, he got his own apartment, own one-bedroom apartment, and it was sliding scale, income-based, facilitated by HUD. And every year we have to, you know, he has to get recertified and all this. But he is at the point of that he is capable of maintaining that maintaining that apartment himself. Oh, that's awesome. Um, him and his cat. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, um, which it, it's good that he has an animal, a cat, um, mm. because he it gives him a purpose to get up in the morning and to take care of her. Yeah. And it's good for her, for him. And, she could honestly be a service cat if cats could <laughs> lower themselves enough to be a common <laughs> service cat, you know. But um, it's it's become a very good thing. But when we found out he was, um, when he told us, "I want to move out," mm-hmm. help me find a place, and we started, you know, looking for a a suitable housing complex. Yeah. It was at that moment that I beefed up how much, how many, um, getting my words all convoluted. Um, I increased the life skills training with him. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. So when you have a child that you are even thinking about transitioning into the, out of your home Mm -hmm. and like on their own, in whatever capacity, right? You're going to want to really beef up life skills, and absolutely, that's not just you know for special needs kids. Okay, no, it's for every child, for every <laughs> child, they all need to know how to clean their bathrooms, do their laundry, cook for themselves. You know, all those yes. those things. Yes, I mean, and yeah. homeschool is the word home is in that for a reason. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, we're we're not teaching the kids no matter if they're typically developing or special or whatever have special needs we want them to learn how to be comp you know comp- bleh, competitive that's not the right word um <laughs> sometimes it is yeah. but we want them to be competent adults yeah in society and mm-hmm. and that means they need to learn how to clean a toilet you right. know, and mm-hmm. <laughs> and that means that they need to know how to cook properly. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I would have Sam in the kitchen with me, just like I have Laura in the kitchen with me, right. learning how to cook eggs, learning how to make this, make that. Mm -hmm. And Sam is, um, he's not a bad cook. He's not a great cook, <laughs> but you know, he, he eats and he's well fed, yeah. but he, um, but he's in charge of that. Right. And yes. so, yeah. And I think when, that that answers, you know, Cynthia's question too. She was talking about her student having fears. And I think when you do yes. plan and you, you teach to what they need, those fears tend to dissipate because they realize they have the skills to then go to the grocery store. I remember, you know, taking my kids and, you know, being their first time, you know, being in charge of that or their mm -hmm. first time in, you know, planning a meal and, you know, some of those bigger things and realizing they can do it, then the fears disappear because all of a sudden you've got over that hurdle. And there's so many yes. hurdles that have to be gotten over in that time period. Right. And so, so really, yeah, coming alongside and doing those things with them is so important. Yes. The more you talk about it and walk, you know, talk those, talk about each step that's right. Mm -hmm. And train your child. Um, then that will, that knowledge will alleviate those fears. Right. And it really does. Mm -hmm. And then they always know that they have you as a fallback too. You know, Absolutely. that's so important. And that homeschooling, again, it, it helps tighten that relationship. And, mm -hmm. um, and your kids know, hey, if I have a question, I can always text mom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, a absolutely. Sam is not afraid to call me and say, hey, I need to do this. I need to go grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. um, I need to do that. This. Hey, I have this issue medically, mm -hmm. you know, and um, he's he knows who to call right. and who can help him. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. that's so but, important. With also, lastly, on this question, um, you know, there might be services within your state that are helpful. Exactly. Um, yep. Such as like one-on-one -on -one community support, supported living supports. Mm -hmm. And you you don't know what you don't know until you ask. Yeah. Um, so just the best thing to do really is Google your area and like... Um, special needs supports yeah, for, for adults mm -hmm. yeah. and um, see what's out there. Right. Yeah. There's, there's like disability services, but then there are private organizations. Um, there's Christian organizations. Um, yes. There's, you know, groups, there, there's a variety of different things out there, but like you said, it, we, you like move from one community to another. You move from the homeschool community into this disability community. And, yes. um, and it, it takes a little while because you, right. you have to learn the ropes of what, what is available and how you can get busing. And, yes. you know, like you said, the, the supported living and uh, all those different things and what works. And Absolutely. sometimes it's trial and error. <laughs> so, and just yeah. like curriculum, you know, if one thing doesn't work, don't be afraid to stop it and do something else. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. So I would like to approach to the practical for the parent. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, we, we think so much about our kids, but practically we got to survive this <laughs> yes. as well. Um, and homeschooling is hard. It is just a hard thing when you've got a child that struggles, you probably, mm -hmm. most of us have multiple children that struggle, not just yes. one that just comes with the territory often. Um, and Absolutely. so, so how, what, what advice do you have um, for parents who find themselves in that spot? Um, do not count showering as self care. It, it is not. No, exactly. It is not. <laughs> That's a necessity. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that to yourself. Um, shower, <laughs> but don't count it as your self care. Right. But, um, you need to really find someone who knows your child, who's comfortable around your child to step in and help take care of that child, whether it's your spouse. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times um, the mom is the brunt of the caregiving. Yeah. It's just the way it is. And, but make sure that your husband 
knows that if this happens, this medication has to be administered. If this happens in this, you know, you're, yeah, you're a team, you're, you're yeah. partners. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but make sure that you both know those things mm-hmm. and don't be afraid to ask and say, you know what? I could really use a night by myself in a hotel room just by myself, me and the clicker and the, the TV remote and a hot <laughs> bath and a massage and whatnot mm-hmm. and do it. You yeah. know, if I keep going back to that um, oxygen mask mm-hmm. adage that we've all mm-hmm. heard, you know, yeah. the first thing you, you fly on an airplane, the first thing the flight attendant says is you put the oxygen mask on yourself and then on your child, mm-hmm. because if you put your child first, n- that child cannot put your <laughs> o- oxygen mask on you. Right. So it's important to take care of you, whether mm-hmm. that's, like I like to get up earlier than my daughter. Um, I help get my husband off to work and I go feed my chickens and I, <laughs> my cats. And then I settle in and I have my time with my coffee and my Bible and my little word game on my phone. And <laughs> uh, that's my time to mm-hmm. ease into the day. Yeah. And if I did not have that, if I just have got up and immediately started doing all the things. Oh yeah. You cannot do I that. Can't. <laughs> Your day just, it starts out bad, right? Right from yes. the start. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and mm-hmm. if you're not a morning person, if you want to stay up late, you know, wait till everybody goes to bed. Right. And have then at least time. you're thinking on those things, you know, the good stuff as you go to sleep too. Yes. You've got the scripture in your head. You've got, yes, all of that. Yes. And um, just as much as we want to make our, you know, kids be the end all be all of our lives. Mm-hmm. It's putting them on an, that's making idols of them. Yeah. That's okay. very good. We, we really cannot is. do that. Mm-hmm. We have to put Jesus first. Yes. And mm-hmm. then our husbands and then our children. Yes. Because if mm-hmm. we don't have, if we're married and if we don't have that top two spot reserved mm-hmm. for our husband and we mm-hmm. put our children there. Yeah. That marriage will not last or it will not be strong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have to have a united front. And I'm speaking, um, my two boys, they're from my first marriage. And, mm. uh, you know, I put them first because my my husband at the time was like a child himself. Mm. And he was not a father figure at all. He was mm. abusive. But... My husband now, I'd say now, and like I'm going to have another one, but no. (laughs) Right now, my husband now. um, He and I are tight. He and I are Mm. like God, then each other, and then our children. And it's, we need that. We need that um, partnership. Yes. Yeah. And you're living Um, out an example that you want them to follow. Absolutely. Oftentimes we find ourselves living out an example that we don't want our kids to follow. We don't even think about it because we're in Absolutely. survival mode. And instead of being proactive about how we want to live in front of them and in front of God as well. Yes. Um, and, and we got to step back and we have to think about that. Right. How am I living? Am I living a way that I, I would be happy to see my child living in the future, because guess what? They're going to follow what you do more so than what you say. (laughs) You know, you said the key words is survival mode. And so many times, especially as parents, we are living in survival mode. We are living from one chaotic moment to another Mm -hmm. and we can't catch our breath because there's another thing to happen. And but we're um, letting that chaos lead us too, which it doesn't yes. have to. That is a choice. Right. That's a choice. And a lot of times we don't have systems in place in our homes. Yes. Mm-hmm. To deal with those things. Mm-hmm. 
like for example um sam when he was younger he would often wet the bed like even as a teenager oh yeah and it's just <laughs> i know part and parcel Art. of it right mm -hmm. yeah um and he continued to wet the bed when i was the one stripping the bed <laughs> and i was the one dealing with the laundry and all this and then one one day i had i had had enough it was one of those <laughs> mom's not <laughs> psycho moments you know uh -huh. <laughs> and i said you strip the bed you mm -hmm. put it in the washing machine you deal with this right and he did it and suddenly he didn't pee that night uh -huh. and when i when i said i'm not doing this anymore i mm -hmm. i have reached a wall i i give up because right. it was like every single night for right. months and, and a lot of times it is a choice. And for, right. I know a lot of our kids on the spectrum, it's what's comfortable. Well, not right. getting up in the middle of the night is comfortable. And especially yes. since I don't have to pay the price in the morning either. <laughs> but yes, you, you pass the pain along. And that was always was a, a, a quote of mine. I'm passing along the pain. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and I ask him, you know, what can you do to not pee in the bed? Mm-hmm. And he said, right. well, not drink something at nine o'clock at night. I was like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, and, but I, I would get him to think about these things and hit, mm -hmm. think about his actions. Right. But it, it stopped a lot. I mean, and I know there are some kids out there that medically speaking, things right. happen. It's just yeah mm -hmm. you know, and medically speaking i know that there are some kids who just physically cannot do that right i get mm -hmm. that but as a mom and or dad um we need to make systems in our homes to deal with that so the chaos doesn't reign supreme in our yeah. homes yes and if that okay. means like in the morning getting dinner going in the crock pot in the slow cooker yeah Mm -hmm. You know, that's a system. Right. Because then you don't have to think about it. You know, about that extra about time. The chaos. Yeah, and, exactly. And I don't know about you, but when I had littles in the house, it was like between five and seven o'clock at night. They went crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we used to call it the witching hour, but mm -hmm. it was two hours of just they were hungry. They were tired. They were frustrated and all this. And right. It got to the point where I. I just had to give up, but in that giving up and giving that to the Lord mm -hmm. and him saying, put systems in place. Mm -hmm. You know, he, when he created when, in the week of creation, when he created the earth and everything in it, it was very methodical. Yes. And he would make, he made the, the sun and the moon before he made you know, the plants that would need the sun to grow. Right. Exactly. And so yep. it was very methodical, very system oriented mm -hmm. that every day of creation um, supported the next day's events. Yes. And, so, and it goes back to scripture, you know, that we, we have to do, we have to deal with what's today. Not, absolutely. The, you know, and we, we spend so much time with the fear and building up in mm -hmm. that, do what you can today. Put the system Absolutely. in place that you can today and yes. then tomorrow deal with what's tomorrow <laughs> mm -hmm. and it'll all, it'll all work out. Yes. Absolutely. So Terry, you have shared some amazing practical advice and I'm sure we could talk for hours, but you have an event coming up that's going to yes. share <laughs> two days of practical advice um, for parents mm -hmm. who are homeschooling special needs kids. And I want you to talk about that before we, we break off our conversation. Absolutely, Peggy, I do appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I have a heart, as you could tell, for mm. parents and families and kids who have special needs. Um, as a special needs mom, special needs wife, etc. And the Lord has really led me to create the Homeschooling Special Needs Expo. Yes. And it's going to be held June 28th and 29th of this year, 2024. Yeah, It's in Shelby, North Carolina, which is outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And it's two days worth of deep diving into special needs, everything. 
Yeah. Um, we have over 50 speaker, 50 sessions from over 30 speakers, over mm-hmm. 25 special needs specific exhibitors, which I'm so excited about. Mm-hmm. We're going to have a sensory room when if kids come and um, they're just need a sensory break, they can go in there and take it, take some moments. Mm-hmm. But that sensory room also gives parents the opportunity to check out sensory products and uh-huh. um, if cool. they, if, and to learn, you know, oftentimes we, we hear about sensory items and sensory products. Right. And we don't know not, if it's going to work or not. We don't know if it's going to work. Yeah. We don't know what it's about. Mm-hmm. Um, but this gives you hands-on, um, a way to hands-on look at them, touch them, talk with the people that are coming, um, fun and function is sponsoring that and they will be there on site yeah. to talk about sensory rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have a church track, which I'm so excited about. Yeah. Um, you know, Peggy, oftentimes going to church as a special needs family is almost it's, impossible. It's, it's right. so difficult. Mm-hmm. But this church track will teach churches how to minister to uh, special needs families. Mm-hmm. And, but the, and I'm really excited about that part too. I'm excited about all this, <laughs> but um, the the big name um, that I'm very excited about bringing here to the expo is Dr. Temple Grandin herself uh, will be in person at the event, get, uh, delivering the capstone keynote on Saturday night. And then afterwards um, we'll have a VIP Temple Grandin experience where people can, um, it's a ticketed event. It's an extra Mm -hmm. event, but um, people actually get to meet her, shake her hand, um, get books autographed from her and meet her. And Mm -hmm. it's, um, we're limiting the number of those tickets. So as to not overwhelm Dr. Grandin Mm -hmm. um, or the other, or the parents, Um, but it's going to be an amazing event and it's just $79 for both days. And, um, you will not find, um, more special needs in any other homeschool conference. Right. uh, Yes. Um, And if you, you got our e-blast yesterday announcing this show, you actually got a code for a major discount off of that too. Yes. Um, So if you're not on our email list, you might want to be, because I think we'll probably send out another one at at some point. So be watching for that. Um, But that'll be coming up soon because um, I think what, what is it? May or April 1st is the early bird cuts off, right? That's right. And so then the price is going to go up. So if you want tickets, you're going to want them sooner instead of later. Absolutely. And it's, um, I think it's going to sell out pretty quickly. So, you know, the, the quicker you get on board and get your ticket, one, it'll be cheaper. And two, you actually get a ticket. Right. Um, and if you and want get to that, meet in person, a lot of people who have been guests on my show. <laughs> yes. And quite a few. Yeah. So the big, big ones that everybody loves. So just yes. know that too. Yeah. Um, and it's sponsored by so many different people. Um, Sped Homeschool, Homeschool. Yes. is the platinum sponsor, um, which I'm so happy about. And, you know, um, Johnny and Friends is sponsoring, which mm-hmm. is huge. And um, Apologia, and I'm not going to fit, forget somebody, but um, IEW and just a bunch of different ones. Amy uh, Bodkin Consulting is another mm-hmm. gold sponsor. And, just people that have been on this program and yeah. like you were saying, and who have given, you know, poured their lives work into helping families who have special needs, they will be in person speaking. Yeah. And um, a lot of them will be exhibiting. So you can actually right. go and talk to them, talk with them. and pick That's their great. brains. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's going to yeah. be a fantastic event. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited to head to North Carolina and um, join you for that event. And I'm looking forward to seeing lots of people there that um, in person. It's been a while. So, yeah. Well, thank you for putting that together. And um, and so so they can go to um, IAJministries.org. Is that correct? Yes. That's right. And just go to events, the events tab, Mm -hmm. and just scroll down. Mm -hmm. And you can see that in 
if you um there are multiple different tabs under the events but if you um you know you could look at the schedule you can look at um all the sessions all the speakers the sponsors etc mm-hmm. and i'm constantly constantly updating that <laughs> website but um it's it's going to it has some great information on it um i'm actually working on the program now which the program wow. alone will have information in it about special needs it's awesome. not just going to be um, a map and speakers and all this stuff. It's going to be, it's going to have some meat to it. Oh, so, awesome. That's great. You can only get that if you go to the conference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. And so IHAministries.org is your, your main website. And then you have two other websites. Um, and those yeah, can be found busy. on that one. <laughs> You've got the homeschooling one child. And if you're listening on the podcast, it's homeschooling the number one child.com mm-hmm. um and what can people find there um there i focus on um homeschooling singletons because that's what i do and also homeschooling mm-hmm. um, kids with special needs because children learn differently whether it's one child or multiple right. and so we all if we have one child or 15 children um they all learn individually yeah, and so exactly. we we still homeschool one child. And we so do, that's, yes. That's one at a time. That's my hope. <laughs> and oh, so yeah. you can find a lot of information there on a multiple different um, of resources. I have resources there. I have all my books on that on my store there. Okay. Um, I've written a book on um, being overwhelmed as a homeschool mm-hmm. mom, homeschool parent. So you might want to check that out. And um, I'm currently, Peggy, writing a book about my son's journey. Ah. And um, that is called My Son Sam, uh, Valleys mm. and Victories in Autism. Wow. And so Can't I'm wait. currently writing that book for the conference. Oh, cool. Very yeah. neat. So that's exciting. And then you got another website called nearyouraltar.com. And Near that's where your podcast is? Is um, No, my Homeschooling One Child it has my podcast. Oh, okay. All um, right. I've toyed with the idea of having a podcast for Near Your Altar, but I, I need to focus on some other things first. Yeah. But, <laughs> You're um, a busy lady. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Near Your Altar is my Christian encouragement um, website and blog. And that's um, if you're a Christian and you just need encouragement on how to live a more godly life and where you're near God's altar mm-hmm. in your life, that's the place for you. Awesome. Well, lots of great resources. I'm going to put those all in the show notes um, along with the direct link information for the event so that um, yes. you can get all that information looking in the show notes, whether it's on YouTube or on the podcast. Um, and then you don't have to try to type in that URL. <laughs> you yes, can just click absolutely. it. Um, we'll get you there. So, well, thank you, Terry, so much for this well, conversation. You, Practical advice is so important. Um, and, and just knowing how do I survive today? And um, you've, yes. you've added a lot of wisdom to that. So thank you so well, much for you. this conversation. It has been thank very you. good. Um, yeah. And I look forward to seeing you in person in June. Um, and and, (laughs) yes, exactly. So Terry and I met years ago at another conference and we actually ended up being partnered up, which was it. We didn't had no idea where God was going to take our futures at that point. Um, but so glad that our paths continue to cross. So, Mm -hmm. um, so that's exciting, but thank you again for being on the show though. And for sure. Thank you Peggy for having me. Absolutely. Well, next week, um, we are going to talk about the intimate connection between mental health and learning disabilities. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to want to be back for that conversation. Um, And we'll be here at the same time, same place. And so thank you for those of you that popped on with us live or um, downloaded the podcast, watched on YouTube. I know we were in a lot of different places all the time. So um, because we know that you have crazy lives and um, and we want to make sure you get the information that you need need however that's easy easily digestible for you so um so thanks for joining us and um terry i'm super excited about your event can't wait can't wait to see what god does with that and um can't wait for all of you to join us there so bye everybody and we'll see you again next week and god bless I 
take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on this podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. This has been Empowering Homeschool Conversations with Peggy Ployer. I found myself on a ledge three stories high at some condominiums, contemplating my life and struggling to understand my purpose. Have you ever found yourself on the ledge? My name is Billy Yates. I'm a caring father, mentor, and friend in my new podcast, Billy and the Goat. I share the life-changing events that shaped who I am today to remind you that no matter how far you've fallen, God can help you get up and thrive. Listen now at lifeaudio.com.